Hello, and welcome to the next Lucosa Retro Game Review video. Except this one isn't particularly retro. Uh, this is Spaceman Splorf, Planet of Doom, which was released in 2016, so it's uh, just over two years old. So this was uh, a, a freeware release uh, by Pond Software Developers or Pond anyway and uh, SDW, whoever they are I'm assuming they are all um, like uh, demo uh, uh, groups or something it is, this game does play a bit like a, a sort of interactive uh, music disc. Um, so yeah, this is a, a pretty simplistic uh, game, to be mildly, but uh, the presentation is pretty good. Uh, we've had the uh, storyline through that uh, intro sequence that you saw at the start. And uh, the game, or the program I should say, for me is more of a music disc. Uh, I think the music throughout this game is great. Um, there are multiple tunes, so uh, what I'll do, I'll change the music for each go I have. Believe me, each go doesn't last very long, or at least it doesn't when I'm playing it. So let's get a game underway. So here we are, you are Splorf. Now the controls are fire to thrust and then that's it. And you basically got to uh, avoid all of the uh, asteroids. You can't fly right up to uh, the top though, the barrier at the top there will kill you if you hit it. And uh, likewise if you fall right the way down to the bottom, the uh, like that green goop or whatever that's on the ground you are killed if you touch that. But the actual background graphics, all these like purplish buildings or whatever, they're fine. You, you can pass through them, no worries. Okay, next tune, and off we go. So this is likely to be a fairly short review because I mean I have pretty much shown you everything. Um, I mean a while ago, I think it must have been just over a year ago now, I did the review of the Commodore 64 version of uh, Cannabelt, or was it Annabelt, however you pronounce it. And this is pretty much the same sort of vain, you know, it's it's a simplistic game, only one control, you know, press fire button, that, that is it. Uh, you press fire and uh, it automatically fills your name in, or the last name you put in. As that goes so short, I'll uh, keep the same music for this go. So yeah, I mean, it is just a, a score chaser, you just, you know, it's entirely about high score, there are no levels. And like I say, for me this is more about uh, or being a, a music disc with a, a small sort of, uh, oh fucking hell, a small sort of like interactive section, fuck it, I don't know how I'm getting through all that lot. And I got killed by the asteroids. The asteroids do look a bit like potatoes to me, so I got killed by the deadly King Edward. <laughs> Started the game straight away. I didn't actually mean to do that. Well, I think, yeah, you can change the music during the game as well, so here we go. But yeah, I mean, this is, this is it. I don't know how the fuck I got through that. Uh, my highest score on this is about 
So, yeah, I haven't exactly done well at it. But, uh, I mean, despite the fact that, okay, it doesn't have a great deal of last ability, you're not likely to be playing this over and over and over again. But, you know, the music is certainly great and it's uh, something to do while you're listening to it. You know, it's not just a case of sitting there looking at a blank screen or whatever. You do actually have something to do on screen while listening to uh, the music that's uh, playing. So, in that regard, yeah, I, I do quite like it. In fact, I mean, not even just the, in that regard, I, I do like this. Um, you know, it's not going to win any awards in terms of uh, the complexity of gameplay. But, uh, you know, it does work, which is more than a lot of modern games do. Um, and it's a decent way to while away, you know, a, a few, well, say about half hour. Change the tune, and off we go again. Yeah. That's my contribution to the music. So let's get the uh, review underway. Graphics, I think the graphics are superb. For uh, Commodore 64, I think they look amazing. The problem with a lot of uh, Commodore 64 games is because it is a relatively low resolution display, a lot of the time the graphics can look quite chunky, and do look quite chunky. Uh, in this, that was my worst go, yeah. Uh, in this, I think they are pretty well defined. They're not, you know, they don't look horribly chunky. There's no sort of like bomb jack syndrome with this one. So yeah, I think they look good. Uh, and you know, it's not just on the uh, the main sprites, you know, the characters and the asteroids. The backgrounds look fine. They look bit more than fine, they, they look great. Um, the presentation is, is great. And uh, yeah, absolutely no complaints as far as how the game looks. Uh, in terms of audio, I think uh, the music is brilliant. Just scraped the uh, 2000 there. Uh, there's plenty of it, and it's all, you know, decent stuff. I think the next one is my favourite piece of music in the entire game. Uh, indeed, it's, it's the fact that the music is so good, and the graphics are so good, and the gameplay is very simplistic. That's what makes me think, okay, this lot, maybe they come from the like demo scene rather than actual game coders. I don't know that for sure, but it's just how it seems. I mean, they certainly know how to put together a fucking, you know, playable game that's uh, a decent little sort of blast for uh, about half hour. So you can't say they can't code games, that, that would be talking utter shite. Oh. Ah yeah, absolutely fucked that up. 2,559, well that's my best on this guy. I think. Yep, yeah. by quite a margin actually. Let's uh Okay, no, this isn't the uh, piece I was thinking, it's the next one that uh, I think is the best music on in the game. So anyway, I've covered graphics, I've covered audio, there are sound effects, but if you, you, uh, if you select sound effects, you haven't got the music, and personally I think that defeats the object. Oh, I thought I fucked that. Um, yeah, so on to the gameplay. Yes, okay, the gameplay is extremely simplistic, but rather like the uh, C64 Annabelle. Um, its simplicity is not a bad thing. It, it's one of those where, because a go is over so quickly, or 
lot of the time, especially if you play this game like I do, i.e. shite. Um, you just keep on having, right, oh, okay, one more go, uh, and you lose count of how many times you say, right, one more go, and the next thing you know, even though I've been saying, oh, it's a good game to, you know, kill about half hour, next thing you realise, you've been playing this fucking thing for about, you know, two hours on. So, you know, if, if you're watching this and thinking, sure, oh, it looks shit, you know, there's hardly anything to do in the game, I suggest you give it a try before you fucking dismiss it. It's... It's one of those games, it just keeps you coming back. And yeah, as I've already said several times before, the music certainly helps. Let's change uh, the music again, once I've put the name in. Yeah, this is my uh, favourite piece in the, uh, in the whole game. Yeah, I mean, because the music is so good, it also keeps you, you know, uh, playing it because you just want to hear, uh, you know, either your particular favourite piece or if you're doing as I'm doing now, that was shit. Um, you know, cycling through all of the various tunes, that was my worst go yet, yeah. It didn't even get me in fucking today's top ten. Uh, you can... Um, get the all-time uh, scores saved to disk. For some reason it doesn't work on the image that I have here. I don't know why. Like I say, the game is freeware. You can just download it. It's not, you know, one of these ones like fucking, uh, was it, Hunter's Moon Remastered, where they want you to pay some, I think, ridiculously high price. I would review uh, the remastered version of uh, Hunter's Moon, but I'm not paying the fucking price that some of us want for it. So it doesn't look like I'm ever going to, because uh, the only way I will is if I'm somehow able to get a uh, or obtain a copy of the uh, disc image, and that's not likely to happen. It's not a disc image either, is it? It's cartridge. Anyway, I diverse, uh, or I digress rather from the. Uh, point as we go on to tune 8. So yeah, it's a simple game, but it does keep you constantly playing it. And the decent graphics, uh, you know, certainly help. It's, it's a lot better than just listening to a music disc and having nothing or not much on screen. And as I also already said, the music is superb. So despite it looking very simple, Oh, yeah, despite it looking very simple, it is actually a pretty good game. I am uh, a fan of it. I just got onto the uh, scores there. So how do I rate it then? Um, well, if I was rating it as a music disc for the Commodore 64, I'd rate it like 9 out of 10. I think the music is fantastic. As an overall sort of like gaming experience, okay, yes, it is a bit limited, but it is still decent to play. It's perfectly playable. Um, so I will score it 7.5 out of 10, which is a decent score for a game that, you know, has one control. Um, and yeah, I definitely uh, recommend giving it a go. Let's, uh... Alright, that has turned the music off altogether, I think. There we go, and then we're back to uh, the opening one. Those opening bars of that piece of music, like, it always reminds me of uh, Master of Magic, which is one of my favourite Rob Hubbard uh, pieces of music. Yeah, of all. I mean, he did plenty of decent ones, but that one is, is one that uh, I think really does stand out. Oh, fuck it. 
So there we go then, so that is Spaceman Splorf uh, Planet of Doom. Uh, 7.5 out of 10, very simple, but uh, the, the visuals and the audio keep you playing it for a lot longer than you may think you would. Um, definitely worth a try. If I remember, I'll put a link to the download in the uh, uh, description here. Definitely worth checking out if you uh, are a C64 fan. So that brings this review to an end, and we will see you in the next one.